Thank you, uh, Dr. Anil sir and uh, Dr. Samira. And it's a pleasure to be there on this platform and the academy. And I've been associated with PEMDENT for many years. And I'm glad that Future Dent and uh, the CIPLA, which is given us an excellent uh, platform to come up with this uh, uh, webinar. So today, as uh, explained, we are learning more about the curved canals. and. Uh, Many practitioners do ask me many times when we conduct the workshop that what is the way we can manage the curved canals. And I do understand that, you know, the cases are difficult and endodontics, although it's considered to be, you know, nowadays simpler, but it is actually not because we have been uh, even today uh, having cases which are still challenging. So that's what uh, motivates us to try new things. And uh, the basic thing is the protocols have not been changed. Although you have so much of advance in the instrument, but some facts still remain the same. And that's what we'll be sharing today. And of course we have the uh, session for the question and answer. And we we'll try to uh, enlighten if you have any you know, other topics also with respect to endodontics if the time permits. Thank you for introducing me and uh, I hope that this workshop, this webinar will be helpful to you as informed to you by uh, the panel. I am Dr. Suresh Envy and these are my credentials. So coming to the, in general, what are the challenges in endodontics today? And it holds true that you, it's not necessary that you might not see a challenging case. Overall, I do feel in a month, one case will be really challenging, which probably you may require a lot of skill, but yes, majority of the cases can be managed with confidence, but these are the challenging cases which really test your skill. There are cases you will, you know, see there is an instrument fracture in your tooth, which you are going to treat. Of course, there are very commonly under-obturated cases. There are calcification. Severe curvatures are very common, but trust me, endodontics has never been so safe and efficient because uh, I finished my post graduation in 2012. And when I was a UG student and I finished my internship in 2008 or nine, that time we used to read only thing about the hand instrument. Today, there's so many instruments which has come into the uh, market and so much of research has been done basically allows you to do endodontics in a much better way and predictable way if you follow the proper protocol. So you may have so many instruments, but the if you follow the protocols, you can do endodontics in a safe and efficient way. And cases which were, you know, which you might think that difficult to manage, but can be managed very well with enough skill, which you have to develop over a period of time. If you are a youngster and you are new into the field of dentistry. I can tell you with my experience, although I, I have around eight to nine year experience, but I have believed that endodontics is always about skill. With the right skill, many people can do excellent job in dentistry with any instruments. Of course, we have to understand them in a better way. But what are the main reasons for failure? This is an article which is published in International Journal of Endodontics, which are very, very good article. Most of the time we decide the failure based on what we see on the x-rays. But in this article, the fail reasons for failure was evaluated when the you know, endodontic surgery was performed. So they concluded that missing canals, leaky canals, and anatomic complexities, calcification, tend to be the maximum reason for failure. And it is not necessary that a difficult case is always a reason for failure. As you can see in this research, missed canal is, they has maximum, and calcification also has maximum amount of failure. So what I've realized in my practice is that Generally, especially when I was young into the field of endodontics, that we all fail to judge the difficulty and we end up trying wrong techniques and we make more complications, which should not happen 
because we also we always should believe that prevention is better than cure consider the current scenario of covid 19 you know we all are you know stuck in our home but why is, is it followed because prevention is better than cure and no matter which type of disease or which type of scenario which will come ahead ahead us but prevention should be the main goal or aim of our field in no matter whether you're in dentistry or whether you're in medical side and that's what uh, drives the you know disease away from the society please remember that doing root canal treatment first time for the first time is actually easier than the retreatment because retreatment will take more time it requires different instruments and by the time the patient comes to you for retreatment he is already disappointed with the earlier treatment which he has received so you have to also manage the uh, emotional aspect of the patient and uh, sometimes what do i i do feel that cases which are pretty simple are may not been handled properly and they end up going into a retreatment and it really takes a lot of time so i uh, sincerely request all the practitioners that if you if the case is difficult don't hurry up to finish it faster you tend to spend bit more time take more appointments and you know it can help you to prevent the future uh, unnecessary appointments for the patient so what are we to- learning today we will be learning how to identify the difficult curvatures and we will i will slightly show you some cases where i generally found difficult curvatures what are the types of curvatures uh, a little bit of access opening uh, criteria in curved canals and why we should use new generation mita instruments what is the right technique for instrumentation which i follow and of course my techniques are they are not invented by me it's all techniques are already there we just have to believe in it and is there any separate aspect for irrigation in curved canals and do you obturate curved canals in a different way so this is what we'll learn but we'll try to learn it in a simple and safe way because i i do believe you know when i was a student it was a bit difficult to grasp things uh, during that level because things appear to be really complicated it takes as you use those instruments as you see more and more cases as you have more and more experience you understand things better and that is when you can really explain uh, endodontics in a probably a bit simpler way so that we all can understand it so coming to the first point that is how do you identify difficult curvatures so i am sharing you this case here you know this case uh, i always share it in my workshop when you see this you know i tend to ask the viewers my participants that what do you see in this case and generally people will tell me that there is a temporary restoration there is a decay there is a bone loss and there is a yeah, long root all such things people do identify but they miss one thing in the this case and now probably you can appreciate it better that there is a severe case of entomolaris and it may appear to be a uh, just meso distal curvature but it is actually when i did the case uh, we did not take any cbct but i did realize that it was multi dimensional curvature and cases like this are challenging and but safety is the most important aspect when you are practicing this because a uh, instrument fracture in such situation is a nightmare for endodontist i don't know Uh, about the other practitioners but, but if you ask any endodontist nowadays everybody's priority is prevents preventing the instrument fracture and cases like this can only be handled if you have enough knowledge and literature you know if somebody doesn't know about entomolaris then it becomes really difficult because when i was a ug student entomolaris case where you know that time books never used to publish we did not have facebook to see such cases so post graduation did teach me a lot and you know that is the time so i do feel post graduation is very important for enough knowledge but if you don't if you don't do it yes of course the webinars the books articles so much of information is there and i am proud to belong to the field of endodontics where most of the endodontists do contribute the more amount of knowledge to the society 
so x ray significance of course a case which may appear very simple on the x ray would turn up to be complicated so looking at the x ray it is difficult to predict whether you know the case will have any curvature okay so sometimes many people miss the curvature because the x ray is a two dimensional image of a three dimensional object that's why nowadays people stress so much on the cbct because it allows you to uh, take the record in three dimensional way we also have to remember that there are many practitioners who are serving the society and many people may not be able to afford the dental treatment and but we should not get disheartened in such situation because we have to consider that we are in a developing country but yes if you can incorporate uh, a cbct in your practice it is really good and it helps you and you you may not require cbct in every case but the case which you may feel to be you know there is a slight uh, chance that okay there is a severe curvature or extra root it is better and in in between also you can send not necessary that you have to send pre operatively but you can always start if you face difficulty rather than making complication you can always take the benefit of cbct if you believe more on the x ray then you can take angulated x rays and that will so in this case the case appears to be very simple except that mesial acute curvature but if you take an angulated one you can see it was quite difficult extra root in the you know it's an entomolaris case and uh, that helps so angulated x rays does help you in many situation so uh, you should invest in rvg because many people may take film uh, you know and they i have seen that they avoid taking many x rays of course it is not good to expose the patient but cases may sometimes require multiple angulations to judge the difficulty i have found one uh, finding over uh, my endodontic practice which uh, i have found it pretty uh, true or over and over that whenever i see a case where i have a thin uh, middle root and a wide uh, apex i do assume that the canal sear would be really narrow because these cases also end up having more calcification and uh, they are challenging the way you can see that you in such cases you should expect that there will be lot of curvature and uh, of course you have so many instruments i do believe that 4% in such situation can be really helpful to manage such difficult cases so you have wide variety of instruments whatever whichever instrument you feel comfortable you should practice with it but overall research says if you want to find the curvature then the best is cbct but of course that involves a lot of equipments and investments and uh, but but x rays can also tell you and research also says that 85% of tooth exhibit some amount of curvature Uh, in their roots so it is not uncommon but the severity varies and the challenging cases are generally which are very severe